camera's in a weird spot, and I don't really fucking care at this point. <laughs> so I feel like going on a rant at this point, it's 2 in the morning. And the only reason I'm even really up awake is I should be awake because now I work third shift at a factory job. So now on the days that you have off where you're not working, you have to stay awake at the times where you're not normally supposed to stay awake in order to make sure that you maintain a somewhat healthy sleep schedule <laughs> on the days where you're supposed to work. Because then otherwise you either end up staying awake where you're not supposed to be awake or you sleep when you're not supposed to sleep and it just it fucks you up but no um i just want to do like a rant if anything um like i was kind of talking about it yesterday with a friend of mine who just happens to be transgender and yes i do have those transgender friends um we were out, we were, uh, there was a, they called it a mac and cheese crawl, which is basically a bunch of bars that were all on the same street decided to get together, and they wanted to participate, where they would all, like, you get a ticket, you pay one price for the ticket, and then you just go to each of these places, and you get, like, a stamp or a sticker or something, and you buy mac and cheese, or you get mac and cheese from all these places. Now, granted, we get there, and we realize that the tickets were a little expensive, but... <laughs> I don't know what prompted this, but at some point, because there was, like, a group of us involved, I decided to text my transgender friend that was riding with me, I'm like, listen, uh, I don't know why I'm texting you this, but it's like, listen, there are a lot of attractive females there, you know, the place that we were at at the time of me making this text, and, like, I want to say something, but I don't. And I'm really, like, attracted to them. I know who they are. Because, like, the place that we went to, the places that we went to, they're places that I've been to before. So a lot of these people were, like, a lot of these women were really, really familiar. So it was kind of like I wanted to say something, but I didn't know, like, what to say and all that jazz. Which is pretty typical of me. Blah, blah, blah. But, um... No, I guess, I guess my point... Or rather to like, you know, get to a phrase of fruition. Um, dating is weird anymore for me. Granted, it's weird for guys in general in this decade. <coughs> Hi, Mr. Officer, I can see you and... No, for the record, you're not going to try and pull my ass over, and if you do... No, you want to stay right where you're at? Okay. Yes, I do make commentary whenever I drive by a police car like that, and no, I don't ever mean to be derogatory to police. It's just a little, like, joke in my head. But no, relationships in general suck for guys anymore. And I'll explain. The reason they suck for guys is because you have to understand it's harder for a guy in this day and age to be attractive to a woman. It is. It really truly is that much harder for a man to seem or appear attractive to a woman. Because women at this point on earth in general, not just even in the United States of America, but on earth in general, on this planet, women have come pretty far as far as the strides that they've made as far as voting, owning homes, 
owning cars, owning their own businesses, and successful businesses at that, really successful businesses, making money, having their own bank accounts. <laughs> having credit scores, being able to buy their own food and drink and furniture and shit like that. And then, the big one, let's be clear, women can have kids. Women can give birth to kids without even having sex with a man. Science has come far enough that women can have kids and give birth to them without even knowing the man, without having sex with that man. You take a sperm and an egg and you basically mix them up together in a petri dish and if it takes, then you real quickly inject it back into the woman. I mean, granted, I'm sure I'm paraphrasing here. I know there's a lot more to it than that, but the general broad strokes are that that's what happens and then a woman gets pregnant. So, my point is, at what point does a woman need a man? And the answer is, they don't. Women don't need men in today's day and age the same as they did, let's say, back in 1955. Back then, woman, women couldn't really do a whole lot of anything for that matter. You had to have a man around because the man made the money. The man was in charge of all the books and shit. And he was the one who knew how to drive. I mean bad example, my grandmother on my dad's side had to learn how to drive from one of her sons. My uncle taught my grandmother how to drive because that's what it was like back then. It was just a thing. So for a man in 2022, you have to understand that women don't need you anymore. You are no longer considered a need in the sense that you have to just exist for a woman to want to date you or to need to date you. That was kind of how it was back in the day that women didn't necessarily want to date you, but they needed to date you because they knew that you had money and all that other fun stuff. <coughs> so nowadays, men really have to step up their game and men have to learn how to be romantic. They have to learn how to really express their feelings and emotions. They have to really learn how to set themselves aside from the other men that exist in this world. And now granted, on that note too, let's say that there is a difference between men and boys. You're either one or the other. You can't really be in between per se. You either are a man you act like a man, you talk like a man, you carry yourself like a man, or you act like a boy. You talk like a boy, you act like a boy, and you carry yourself like a little boy. Now, sometimes being a little boy isn't really the worst thing in the world, but nonetheless, <coughs> it's better off to be a man. And you have to be the right kind of man for a woman to find you attractive. Now, for me personally, and granted, I know that I don't necessarily, you know, I know it's kind of hard to see a lot of times with the YouTube videos that I make because most of the time I just go ahead and use my phone because whenever I have a YouTube video I want to make, I just go ahead and say, fuck it, I just grab my phone point the camera at me and hit the damn record button and go from there and just whatever happens happens because that's kind of how I do it. I just have a thought in my head and I want to be able to somehow properly express it in the moment of me feeling it. Otherwise, I'm going to lose that feeling or that emotion. But for me, I'd like to think that I am a man. I'd like to think that I am no longer a boy. Um... I do carry myself on a very sort of relaxed personality. I don't have a whole lot of 
stand up straight confidence in myself, but nonetheless, I would like to think that I am a man. Um, it's not something that I would normally like discuss, I guess, but as of 2022, I did recently just become a homeowner for the first time. And I am actually taking the long way to get home just so I can kind of continue this little thought of mine so I can waste a little time here as much as I really shouldn't because gas prices went up. And if you think for even the slightest bit that Joe Biden directly had anything to do with gas prices, you can suck it. The president does not control the gas prices. There are millions of other factors that change this. Like, for example, the fact that Russia and Ukraine are going to war. That's going to affect the outcome of gas prices. In case you didn't, like, bother to think about that. There are just a million different things that can affect gas prices. So, I am a man. I have a relatively slender body. I'm not skinny like a twig because I at least know how to eat from time to time. I can at least grill myself two hamburgers and a side of fries and I can make it disappear in like seconds. I mean, my friends joke. They're like, uh, there was food there like two seconds ago and now it's gone. Like, what the hell? So, I have a relatively slender body. I, I don't necessarily work out at a gym, but I do lead a relatively active lifestyle given, given the job that I do currently. I am in a factory that specifies in the repair of airplane parts. So there's a lot of me moving around, walking, standing, lifting, lowering, putting myself in awkward positions, you know, heavy stuff, using cranes and tools and shit. So I'm getting pretty active nonetheless. Um, you know, there's really nothing that... Um, obstructive about me as far as the way I look. I don't have any like weird deformities or anything like that. No bulging like bumps or cysts or anything. Um, I mean, I guess my face kind of has a pretty standard shape to it. I'm not like really chiseled in the face. Um, it's hard to tell because it's at night, of course, but I did just recently get my hair cut yesterday also, so I do kind of have a bit of, like, a mohawk going on. Uh, uh, excuse me. So I'd like to think that I'm a relatively good-looking guy to really kind of just, again, speed this up a bit. I don't want to take up too much time. I'd like to think that I'm a good-looking guy who's got a decent amount of common sense, who knows what the hell he's doing out of life, who has a home, I paid off my car, I have a good job that's full-time, that's Monday through Friday with overtime, and yet, I'm single. And that's weird, I guess. And we're getting really close to my house now. So I'm just gonna put it in park and save some gas and talk about the rest of this. Um, it's, it's so stupid to me. I hate to say it. It's so stupid to me to sit here and wonder why I'm single. It is. I'm on two dating apps. I'm on Hinge and Tinder. Tinder is very popular. And I actually, now that I think about it, I just saw a documentary on Tinder. The Tinder Swindler. This individual who appears to be like, I don't think he was Jewish. He was like Middle Eastern of some kind. And he was just like pretending to be this really lavish, rich motherfucker. And he would lie to women to say, hey, come hang out with me. I'm rich, yada, yada, yada. And then he would just rob them of their money. And that was it. I'm on Tinder and I'm on Hinge. Um, and of course, the algorithms anymore, for anybody that knows what an algorithm is, it's basically some kind of a math equation that learns as it goes. So 
the hope is that it learns for the better, and most times it does not. Um, because anymore when I open up either one of these apps, I feel like I'm getting, I hate to say it, ugly women. There are, and, and that's not to say that there is a standard definition for ugly women, so much as it is that I just don't find you attractive. You know, I have what I like and what I don't like, and what I like as far as a female partner, I am a straight guy and I do like women, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of people, well, there were people actually in grade school that like would make fun of me, they'd question me, and they'd be like, you're gay, but that's a whole other story. But no, I am straight, I do like women. And I just want to find a good woman, a good, good-looking woman. You know, I don't want you to necessarily be like a Sports Illustrated beach model, per se, but at least have a good-looking fit body. You know, a good-looking, attractive face where you don't have to put on 10 pounds of makeup and look like a clown, because I hate that. God, I hate looking at a woman's face and knowing that there is a difference in skin tone from your face to your neck. I, is it contour? Is that what you call it? Because you put that shit on your face, but you don't put it on your neck. And then I can see a huge difference between your face and your neck, and it's like, why? Why, why did you do that? The light hits your face just right that it like bounces off your skin, off your cheeks, and I just see the difference, and it just does not look right. And the hand-drawn eyebrows. Leave it alone. Your eyebrows don't need to look like you took a Sharpie, a thick, fat Sharpie, and just went doop, doop, and there you go. No, please don't do that. No fake eyelashes. You know, you don't need to do a shit ton with your lips. If you have a couple piercings here and there, that's fine. Get the ears, get the nose. Um, tats on your face... I would say don't get a tattoo on your face. Just, I mean, if you want to do something like behind the ear or on the neck, fine. But if you have a really good looking face, just don't do anything to the face. And yet, for whatever reason, on these dating apps, and I even signed up for Facebook dating, which I thought was going to be incredibly stupid just because I thought, like, you know, I'm going to see a whole lot of people that I know, know, from just going out a lot, and they're going to look at my profile and laugh and swipe left. But the algorithm gives me all these people that I'm, like, unattracted to, and the only way I can get the people, the women that I'm attracted to, is if I, like, pay every month for the app, and I'm not doing that. And they only give you, like, one, it's called a super like, you only get like one of those a month, so you got to be real careful how you use it. You got you go over and you look at all the really good profiles, and you got to actually pay attention to those. You like dogs, cause I have a dog that I share with my brother. You know, and it's just stupid, cause it's like, I don't know, it's like, oh well, I'm not looking for anything at this time, or. You know, I'm, I'm working a lot and this and that and the other thing. And it's like, no, just say what you really want to say. I can't understand why you can't just sit there and be like, I'm not interested. Just say that you're not interested. You don't need to dance around the issue. If I don't look like I'm your type, then just say so. If I don't look like I have the right character or personality, just say so. You don't need to give me some... 10 page essay on well my job's having me work a lot this week or or I don't have money or I can't drive right now or whatever and I mean sometimes it's I understand that those are potentially valid reasons to not be available to go on a date with me but for me personally, because I've I've heard it so many times in the course of my life, it starts to grow on me that that's not just you explaining yourself to, to be excused. 
you're saying it because it seems like you just don't have the heart to tell me that I might not be the type of person that you're looking for, which is what pisses me off. It's not that you're actually busy. It's not that you actually have a job. Everybody's got a job. I got a job. And yet here I am looking for somebody to date, to one day wake up and go, you're my girlfriend. Here's my family. Here's my friends. Let me introduce you to these people. Let's be Facebook official. Why don't you move in with me to my house? Let's go on dates. Let's go on vacations together. Let's take goofy photos and let's wear matching outfits on Halloween and ugly sweaters on Christmas. Why don't I actually have somebody to finally kiss for a change on New Year's Eve? I want to do all that stuff. But for, for a female... To give me anything other than just, I'm not interested, or I'm not looking for anything right now. Which even that one is kind of on the fence for me. It's like, no, I'm sure you're looking. I'm sure you're looking. Like, I'm sure if I spend enough time on Tinder or Hinge or whatever, I'm sure I could find your profile and then take a screenshot of it and send it to you and be like, okay, you're looking for a relationship. You're just not looking for a relationship with me. And I wish you could just say that. So, I don't know. It just sucks. I'd love to be in a relationship. And, I mean, granted, it's weird because it's like I'm talking right now. But the only reason I'm talking is because I know there's nobody in the car sitting next to me to potentially make me, like, nervous, I guess. And I think part of that is also because I come from a family where I feel like I wasn't ever really able to truly express myself. And I still feel like I can't do that around my family members. Anytime I try to say anything, they just look at me and, like, no, we don't, we don't care. We don't care. You just sit in the corner and do your thing. But... Now I'm talking because it's, you know, 2.30 in the morning and I can afford to, like, not have anybody interrupt me either while I'm doing this. I know that I'm not the most talkative in person around a female. And part of that is just because I find you really attractive and because I'm afraid that whatever I say is going to turn you off to the idea of being around me for any longer than 10 minutes. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just, I don't get what could potentially be so wrong with me as a person, as a guy, a straight, white, thin-looking guy with a hard-to-see mohawk haircut right now who has a job, who has a house, who paid off his car, who has a relatively decent credit score that I don't need to tell you exactly what it is, who has a good job, who sort of knows what the hell he's doing with life, who has a decent taste in music and movies. Um, I would like to think that my favorite artist, it varies. My favorite artist varies, I guess, depending on what mood I'm in, because I can listen to just about anything. Like, one day I'll feel Frank Sinatra, the next day it'll be Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons, and then the next day after that I'll be in a Foo Fighters mood, which, rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. Or the day after that I'll be doing nothing but, like, Eminem and Macklemore, which I played that at work one day on a speaker, and my coworkers are looking at me like, oh, I didn't think you listened to this. Um, my favorite movie is always going to be Back to the Future Part 1, and then my second favorite movie of all time is going to be Whiplash with, um, what's-his-face. Like, I saw that in theaters, and I thought that was a date when I saw it in theaters, and I was at the edge of my seat at the end of that movie, and I'm like, holy hell, I was, like, practically sweating. I'm like, this movie is so good. It is number two. It is now officially my favorite number two movie. And then after that, the female that I was with did not want to talk to me at all. And she then told me that she had a girlfriend or something. And I'm like, you did not mention that beforehand at all. It, and if anything else, it seemed like she wanted to get out of that relationship. So I'm like, hey, I'm right here. You can just tell your girlfriend to go away, I guess. I don't know, but. No, it's, it's just weird. Like, this is something that I constantly keep thinking about. 
as much as I really shouldn't because I don't want to dig myself into a rabbit hole that I can't pull myself back out of. But, and I don't expect anybody watching this or listening to this to understand in the least bit. This is me just going on a rant and then taking the, the information and uploading it just for the sake of knowing that there's someone who's going to pay attention to all of like 10 seconds of this. I'm not doing it for the likes or the follows. I mean, you can do that on my YouTube channel. I've got other stuff where I'm singing because I do participate in karaoke from time to time. And I've been told I'm a relatively good singer. Um, uh, let me think here. Can anybody find me somebody to love? Which is kind of fitting, because this is what I'm talking about. Um, but no, it's, it's just weird. It's like, I, I try... To an extent, I mean, granted, again, when I'm in public, I, I kind of chicken out, but it's like, I just don't get it. Like, what is it about me that I don't seem to be the least bit approachable or the least bit like anybody would want to hang out with me? Like, I'll be honest, before I started this video, I was actually at a bar hanging out, and I mentioned to one of the bartenders that was there that I know very well, or I'd like to think that I know her well enough just because I've been going to this bar for a long time I looked at her and I'm like hey I don't know if I told you I bought a house and she's like oh congratulations I showed her the listing on my phone and she's looking and she's like oh my god I love it open kitchen open this that whatever <clears throat> and she's like you know congratulations thanks yada 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 and I'm like listen if you ever want to come over and hang out and shit you can and she goes well I'll be 100% honest I don't normally hang out with people that I know from the bar. Like, I try to keep my work and private life separate. And it almost took everything in me in that moment to just sit there and be like, forget you. I'm pretty sure there's some BS in that line. As much as I don't want to be rude and look like a dick, it's just... Again, like I said before, if there's something that you really want to say, then go ahead and say it. But don't try to dance around the issue just because you want to spare my feelings or make me just less likely to start a riot or whatever. It's like, I can handle the truth. You can sit there and go, I don't want to hang out with you or at your house. You know, you can say that. You don't have to, again, like weasel around it or dance around the issue and come up with some alternative reason. Just say, I'm not interested in you as a person. But for me to hear that because it's something that I've heard more often than not, no one ever, no female ever seems to respond as the way I would like for them to respond, which... I'm not saying that you have to go out with me. I'm not saying that I'm, I don't want to force you into a situation that you don't want to go into, but I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to. Why, what about me appears to be so unattractive that you would say, I'm not interested? Or enough to the point that you would then give me what I would consider to be, dare I say, a fake reason. Just say, I'm not interested. But even then, you know, for you women, it's like if you want to be in a relationship, women, at some point or another, you're going to have to either one, lower your standards, or two, you're going to have to actually learn how to give us guys a chance. I've said that a lot on Facebook with just various posts, various women. I'm like, dude, you have to learn how to give a guy a chance. One date is all it takes for you to give a guy a chance. You can drive separately to the same location. So that way, if you want to dip out, you can dip out on the off chance that this guy, whoever he is, does not seem to be your type. If he seems like he's giving off creeper vibes, hashtag creeper vibes, you can just dip out early. You know, if you're not feeling it, just 
tell them you're going to the restroom and then just get in your car and leave and then just tell the hostess at the front desk, just be like, listen, I'm sorry, this guy is not for me, I'm out of here. You can do that. But at least if nothing else, you took the step to meet the guy in person, see what he looks like, listen to his voice, watch the way, you know, is he leaning forward? Is he like shrugging his shoulders or is he sitting up straight? Is he giving you his full attention? Is he not staring at his phone? Is he actually asking questions about you and not just talking about himself the entire time? You know, but... For as much as you women are independent these days and you have more freedom than you did in past decades to do things for yourself, if you want to be in a relationship with any guy, you have to open yourselves up more to the idea of any guy. If a guy comes up to you and says he's interested in you as a person... Listen, listen to that offer. Just take 10 seconds out of your day, unless you're seriously super busy, and just hear what he has to say. I know that it's, granted it's terribly cliche, but I just want to take whoever you are out to a slightly fancy romantic dinner. Just let's meet up somewhere at random, a neutral zone where we have... No chance whatsoever of running into anybody that we know. So that way we're not tempted to be distracted from ourselves in conversation. And let's just attempt to get to know each other just once. And if you don't feel anything at the end of that, either again you drive yourself separately and then just go home, or I'll drop you back off at your place and then you can say, I had fun. Or maybe you didn't have fun, and then you can say, I'll get a hold of you again to do this again, or I don't feel like doing this again. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. You can say that. Sometimes it's okay to look a guy right in the face and just say, I'm not interested in you. I don't want to date you. And for us as guys, it might not be with every single guy that exists, but most of us guys can handle that if you just flat out tell us that you're not interested. I mean, for me, it'll take me all of about maybe half an hour for me to, like, really let that sink in. Because, again, I'll probably just sit there for, like, half an hour and I'll be like, why? What's what's wrong with me? What did I do? Did I not, did I, like, blink too much? Do I have something in my beard? Something in my teeth? Did I, like, do I look like I'm half asleep? Like, what's the issue? But... After that, I'll calm down. Not that I was, like, in a angry state of mind before, but, like, I'll get over it and I'll just be like, all right, whatever, she's not interested. It's fine. Move on. Try again with somebody else. But, yeah, I mean, now, don't get me wrong. On these dating apps, I do get matches. Um... Because sometimes what I will do, and I know this is going to sound like a dick move, but sometimes I will swipe to match with somebody that I'm not necessarily attracted to, but I will do it to see if I get the match, just to see if the other person matches back with me. So at least that way I can look at the app and go, well, I'm getting matches, I'm just not getting matches with people, women that I find attractive, per se. And, um, yeah, I don't know. That's just how I feel, I guess. And I just wanted to record that on my phone. So now I'm going to take this and plug it into my computer and upload this as is. No editing whatsoever. So go to the rest of my channel, my YouTube channel, if you want, and see what other content I have on there. Uh, leave a comment on this video, or any video for that matter, and, um, yeah, that's just how I feel, I guess. And that's just me expressing myself in the weirdest way possible, potentially. I'm sure that's gonna make no sense to, like, half of you people watching this. And if you made it this far and you watched the whole thing, I guess thank you is in order. 
for sticking around for all of a half an hour of me saying what I wanted to say. So enjoy the rest of your day or night or whatever.